Welcome to worship with Arvada United Methodist Church in Arvada, Colorado. My name is Amy Gerhardt and I'm the lead pastor of the church and we especially welcome our online worshiping community as you join us either on a Sunday morning or throughout the week as we gather to continue in our sermon series called My Imperfect Family, learning from the lessons of the wonderful Disney movie Encanto. Each week we are being um, introduced to another character of this movie and recognizing how just like the imperfect Madrigal family in the movie Encanto, we all are a part of imperfect families. Whether those families are our biological or adoptive families, whether those families are communities of friends or co-workers, we all know that we have important roles and functions in those families, even as imperfect as they are. We celebrate your presence with us and invite you to find a candle in your place of worship and to light that candle with us. After you light that candle, you might wanna also go to this QR code and register your attendance and let us know that you are a part of this online worshiping community and how we might connect more fully with you as we gather, as we serve, as we learn together as Christ's people in the world. We welcome you to worship. I'm Nikki Natsky, and I'm reading from Ruth 1, verses 16 through 17. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do thus, and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. We are so glad to continue in our sermon series of My Imperfect Family, journeying with the Madrigal family in the movie Encanto. Encanto literally means enchanted. And from the outside, this house can look very enchanting, marvelous, and beautiful. 
But sometimes we know that inside our houses, there might be other things going on, like the truth and the realities of each of our lives, as imperfect as they are. Maybe the secrets or the hurts or the memories that we carry behind the walls of our houses. And sometimes those experiences can kind of crumble and erode away at the foundation of what makes our homes strong. So today we are going to journey with yet another character of the Madrigal family. We're going to get to know this young woman named Louisa and to see if we know or love or even have some parts of Louisa in our own lives and our own families. It's an opportunity for us to grow in remembering that families are something that we are all a part of. And families are not just our biological families, but maybe our adoptive families, our families of friends or coworkers. As we enter into this space, we know that it's God's intention with those families and communities to make us whole, to make us courageous and bold in our life and witness in the world to help us know the worth that God has planted in our lives so that we might offer that same worth and love to others. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of this day and for the ways you are at work through our families and those communities that surround us. And even sometimes as we struggle with the memories of those families or the the stories that we tell, even sometimes as we recognize the imperfection of those family systems, yet we hold out this hope that through these relationships and in these communities, we might know a blessing so that we might bless other friends and family and generations and bring a blessing of your love that we know through those communities and offer that love in the world around us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the shortest books in the Bible, this book, in fact, is found in the Old Testament, the first part of our Bible, is the book of Ruth. It's a story and it's a book that doesn't get a lot of airtime when we're preaching on Sunday mornings. But when it comes to families and even imperfect families, Ruth is one of the most beautiful books, just four chapters, one of the most beautiful books about family relationships, not perfect family relationships, but family relationships and the journey that a family takes together to be faithful to God and to honor God's work in their lives. The story of Ruth also is unique in the Bible because it is one of the only books of the Bible whose main characters are women. In fact, the main characters are just two women, Naomi and her daughter-in-law, Ruth. So it's kind of cool that this small book in the Old Testament not only has as its main characters women in a day of patriarchy, in a day when women didn't have any value or worth in society, but also this book takes us to a relationship, a relationship between Naomi and her daughter-in-law, Ruth, a relationship not bound together by biology, but by in-laws. And how many of us know that there's sometimes drama and sometimes all kinds of imperfection when it comes to our in-law relationships. And yet this unique book draws us into the story and relationship between Naomi and Ruth and how these two women in this patriarchal age find themselves having to depend on one another and depend on God in a very unique way. In their patriarchal society, They grew up and lived in a world where women had to be cared for and under the roof of and in relationship with some man, whether that man was a husband that they would marry or whether that man was a relative of a husband should their husbands die. In fact, that's what happens. Naomi's husband dies. Ruth's husband, Naomi's son, dies. And these two women are found facing the world a world where they are left and and feared for their safety and for their concern and for their welfare. And yet they depend on one another and they depend on God as they journey together and forward into the life and the future that would unfold before them. In this story of two women facing the world of patriarchy and kind of facing the world of not being considered worthy of care and love, in fact, they find love. 
Ruth finds love in the relationship with Boaz. And it's in that relationship with Boaz that they continue to find themselves in a life that is flourishing and a life that is rewarded. But I think of Ruth, especially today, when I think of the character that we're going to unpack from Encanto. Encanto is the movie that we're focusing on and learning from this, in this sermon series as we think about our imperfect families. Ruth, like the character Louisa in Encanto, who we'll be introduced to this week, takes on the burdens of her family's care. In fact, in the scripture lesson that we hear today, Ruth is sharing her commitment to her mother-in-law and her mother-in-law's safety and her mother-in-law's welfare. And it will be on Ruth's shoulders that the care of the family and the caring for the family will be carried. That same kind of burden for caring for the family is one that Louisa takes on in the movie Encanto. It's a burden that she carries for everyone and all the concerns of the household, of her sisters, Mirabelle and Isabella, of her parents, of her grandmother. Everywhere Louisa walks, everywhere she carries the weight, it's the weight and the concern and the care for her family. Do you know or love someone like Ruth or Louisa in your life? Maybe you are the one that carries the weight for the family. Here's what Louisa says about that weight that she carries in her song in Encanto called Surface Pressure. She says, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless if I can't be of service. A flaw or a crack, the straw in the stack that breaks the camel's back. What breaks the camel's back, it's pressure like a drip, drip, drip that never stops. Pressure that'll tip, tip, tip till you just go pop. Give it to your sister, your sister's older. Give her all the heavy things that we can't shoulder. Who am I if I can't run with the ball? Let's take a look at Louisa singing her song, Surface Pressure. And imagining the role of the people in our family systems, whether they are biological or adoptive or family or friend systems or even our co-workers. Think about the Louisas that are carrying the surface pressure, carrying the weight of the concerns of their family. If you think about it, Louisa, and the role of the one that carries the concerns and the burdens of the family on their shoulders, sometimes the ones who are called the fix-it ones or the responsible ones in the family systems, Louisa's can be found in so many family systems, but especially some of these family systems that I'm gonna mention, like the immigrant family system, where the child who might be the only English-speaking person in that family system where English isn't the first language, and that child grows up with the expectations and the inherited hopes of what they can accomplish, not only in a new culture, in a new land, in a new world, but also bringing that entire family system with them. Or first-generation families, First-generation families are families where for the very first generation, one of the children grows up and is the only one or the first one to go to college. So often that family system will harbor all the hopes that they have for generations in that family's future on the adventures and on the experiences and on the accomplishments of that first one to go to college. There are Louisa's also found in alcoholic or addictive families when so many times there might be one child or one person in that family system who has to maintain the stability, keep the secrets, make sure that the household chores and work are carried out day in and day out when perhaps the parents are too disabled to be able to function fully as parents because of the addictions that they carry in their lives. Louisa's can be found in families where there are survivors. Think of the families where there are those in Ukraine who have survived the terror and the horror they have experienced. 
or a survivor that has somehow surmounted an unimaginable physical experience or physical loss and yet they have to survive and continue to carry the weight of a family that has continued in its grief and in its healing from that survival experience. Louisa's can be found in the families of caregivers. Whether it's the man in the family who is in the sandwich generation who is caring for his aging parents and his teenage children, whether it's the single mom who is making sure that all the needs are met of others, sometimes to the peril of her own needs being met. These are Louisa's. These are the people in our family systems who are carrying a pressure, a burden, a responsibility for so many others in the family, sometimes to the neglect of their own. Louisa's words resonate with those people in the family. When she says and continues to sing in her song, Surface Pressure, who am I if I can't carry it all? If I falter under the surface, I hide my nerves and it worsens. I worry something is going to hurt us under the surface. I think about my purpose. Can I somehow preserve this? Families depend on Louisa's. Families are strengthened by Louisa's. And yet oftentimes, Louisa, that, that role in our family system who is carrying the burdens of the family, considered the fixer or the repairer or the responsible one, can also be someone who is overfunctioning, sometimes taking on the burdens of others to the peril of themselves and not remembering that others have responsibilities in the family system as well. We all know, love, or maybe have some seeds of Louisa within us. So what might be some new ideas when we find that we're carrying the weight of the family, when we find that we're living under the surface pressure of so many expectations? Here are some ideas that come from a myriad of collections of psychotherapists and counselors and pastors who have helped people who find themselves in this role of carrying the weight of their family. The first thing that we can think of, if we find ourselves sometimes carrying the weight of the family on our shoulders or loving someone who does, is to take responsibility for yourself and to lower your responsibilities towards others. So often someone who overfunctions and carries the weight and the burdens of the family gets blurred in their understanding of what is my responsibility and what is your responsibility. Frequently the overfunctioning person should always say to themselves, I need to be less than I can be which reminds them and boundaries their energy around those things that we can control and making sure others take responsibility for the things that they can control. The second idea to think about is to ask yourself, is this my issue or yours? Frequently the Louisa in our family systems can make all the issues of the families our issues. In fact though, we're healthy in our, in our family systems if we make sure to recognize what are responsibilities and issues that are mine and what are responsibilities and issues that are yours. After years of therapy, one of the wonderful mantras that I have been taught to think about when it comes to boundarying between my issues and responsibilities and the issues and responsibilities of others is not my monkeys, not my circus. There are times when other people and anxious people around us want to make their circus and their anxiety our anxiety. And too often, Louisa's in our family systems can take all that extra anxiety on. When I encounter that reality in my own imperfect family system or even in the family system of the church, I have to ask within myself, is this my circus? Are these my monkeys? Or do I need to equip this person who is highly anxious around me with the tools that they need to deal with their own circus, to deal with their own monkeys as I care for mine? The third strategy we might take on if we're feeling the surface pressure of carrying the weight of the family 
is to watch for the overfunctioning and underfunctioning seesaw that can happen in our marriages, in our most profound and intimate relationships, and especially in our relationships with our children. What this is, this seesaw of overfunctioning and underfunctioning is, is that overfunctioning people will take on the responsibilities of people in a way that allows others to underfunction and not take responsibilities for their lives and for the actions that they need to live out and for the issues that they need to take on. The wonderful author Harriet Lerner, who wrote the really important book called The Dance of Anger, says, we need to practice when we find ourselves on this seesaw with a spouse or a partner especially, where one is over-functioning and one is under-functioning. Lerner suggests that we need to practice this practice called hanging in or, or neither taking on the other's responsibilities, but also not checking out emotionally. How could we hang in with a partner that is over-functioning and allowing us not to take on responsibilities? How could we hang in with a partner who is under-functioning and expecting us to take on their responsibilities? Try to avoid that seesaw. Try to find new ways to balance out the responsibilities we take on in our relationships. Finally, we need to make time for self-reflections and to offer our concerns and our anxieties to God. Especially when we feel that surface pressure building up and when we consider through our reflections and our meditations and just our reflection on how life is going, we need to spend some time with ourselves and with God to consider whose circus this is, whose anxieties we take on, and how we cast our burdens upon God, the one who says, come to me, those who are weary, and I will give you rest. There are Louisas in every family. There, it's a part of our imperfect life together. And Louisas can accomplish great things in our family systems, and they bless us, and they reward us. But too often, sometimes, hidden beneath that surface of carrying everything is a person who needs better self-care, a person who needs to be loved for who they are, and a person whom we can love and care for by taking on the responsibilities that are ours. When Ruth was carrying all the burdens of her family in the book of Ruth in the Old Testament, she heard these words of love from Boaz. May they be words we hear too. May the Lord reward you and all your deeds. And may you have a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you can rest and come for refuge. I hope if you're a Louisa in your imperfect family system, or if you love someone and know someone who is, that you'll help them. Hear the message of the rewards that they brought to their family. Hear the invitation for them to lighten their burdens. Hear the voice of God calling them to come under God's wings and to rest and to renew and to be the person God has created them to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. At the end of Encanto, the family realizes that even in their own personal imperfections and the imperfections of their relationships, that they are still miracles. Just like we remind all of the people who walk into this space that everyone in this space and everyone you meet is a child of God made in God's image. And so they sing this song, all of you, which we began learning last week. I invite you to sing it along with me. I'll sing a section and then have you repeat it. at this hole, we need a new foundation. It may seem hopeless, but we'll get by just fine. Look at this hole, we need a new foundation. It may seem hopeless, but we'll get by just fine. Look at this family, a glowing constellation. 
so full of stars and everybody wants to shine look at this family a glowing constellation so full of stars and everybody wants to shine Last week, Arvada United Methodist Church celebrated a special offering opportunity to raise money for UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, our humanitarian aid fund that reaches out to human beings throughout the entire world in times of crisis. And last week, we raised over $1,200 that helps to sustain the overhead of this vital mission of our global church so that when we give to special UMCOR responses, whether that to be to the humanitarian aid of, of Ukraine or to those who had, were affected by the Marshall fires more locally, 100% of those gifts and resources throughout the year go towards those immediate needs and to those survivors and those who are recovering because we have made a special offering to UMCOR. This is just one of the many ways that the church sustains its mission beyond its walls. And, to, and makes a difference with God's hope in the lives of people. I hope that you'll continue to support the ministry and mission of Arvada United Methodist Church and return thanks to God for the rewards and blessings of your lives and families. You can do that by continuing to give by check that you mail in or online through our church's website. Thank you for your generosity and for the ways we worship God in the giving of ourselves, our time, and our treasures. Like Ruth's family, we are blessed. We are blessed with communities around us that may take all kinds of shapes and forms, but these are partners with us on the journey. These are communities that sustain us and strengthen us and give us that reward of God's voice saying, this is the way we do life together, through imperfect families and communities that give us hope, that resource us with all of the energy and courage that we need and draws us into the company and companionship and service for God. 
Go into this week knowing that blessing upon your imperfect family and on your unique role in that family. Whether you are a Mirabelle or Isabella or Louisa, or whether you have another role in the life of your family, think about the ways you can continue to live in a healthy way, in a way that strengthens and sustains you as you bless and serve others. Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.